Hey there, welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. I am painting this mountain scene. It's a photograph that I found on Pexels.com and I'll put the link below. And I picked four colors of acrylic gouache that plus titanium white, which I didn't include in my um, palette here. But the four colors of acrylic gouache that I picked are pale lilac and burnt sienna and misty blue and ash blue. So between these four colors, I thought I would have a nice range of colors where I could get the nice pinky lilac colors in the sky. And the burnt sienna works nicely as a darker brown, but still has a lot of life to it that I could use to mix with the misty blue and the ash blue to make some nice gray colors to put into the mountains. And so the key here is going to be showing a nice range of grays and um, getting that distance that difference between the distance and the foreground and the shadowy colors on the mountains. Um, so I thought these four colors would work really well together. So I've got my reference here on the left side and my palette on the right side. So you can see me mixing colors as I start to put my sky in. And I'm starting off with combinations of the misty blue and the ash blue. These go really nicely together, the ash blue being just darker than the misty blue, but they're very nice muted blues. And I'm also adding in some lilac tones for the clouds and getting also mixing that with some blues and getting some really nice purpley tones. And I'll also be mixing in some white as I move down towards the horizon. And but I'm still I'm not gonna keep it. I'm not going to make it really, really light. I'm going to keep it pretty, um, still kind of a mid-tone lilac so that the whites of the mountaintops will show up against that sky. I'm using a really small brush. I could be using a bigger brush, but I kind of like the textural effects that I'm getting using the smaller brush. And I basically used this small brush throughout the entire painting because it's a fairly pretty small painting. It's only about five by seven. So I just liked being able to get that detail. Normally I might start off with a, a larger brush, but for this, I just wanted to get lots of movement in the clouds. So I'm adding white to my lilac now as I move down further down to the horizon line. And I'm still going back in and maybe darkening, darkening up some of the tones at the top. The nice thing about the acrylic gouache is that it doesn't really change colors as much as regular gouache. As the colors dry, they stay consistent, unlike acrylic or regular gouache can. The colors can change quite a bit, usually darker, um, and darker colors can dry lighter, you know, with gouache. So these stay pretty much the same, and I really, I really like that about the acrylic gouache. And here I'm going in with a mid-tone, kind of a gray that I mixed up with the misty blue, adding some burnt sienna into the uh, ash blue and misty blue. So I'm, I'm putting in the big shapes of the, the um, rock formations. As you can see, I'm just kind of outlining them with that darker color. And then working on the outline of the, the mountain top in the distance. Here I start to mix some burnt sienna in with um, some of the misty blue and probably some white to place in some of those rock formations that are kind of, they're more of a warmish brown. So I pretty much go work all over the painting and just try to place some of the darker browns in. And you can see it's starting to really take a little bit more of a shape, but there's still a lot more of detail 
um, a lot of little colors, and I really work all over the palette. I look at my reference and I find the darkest areas and the lightest areas, and I try to keep the light lightest areas where the whites where the snow is going to be. I try to keep that completely clean, um, even though I'm going to go back in with some white later. I keep those areas the, the same the paper color because it's just easier to not have to load up a lot of white to try to build up that snow colored area. So just looking at values, comparing values. I am putting those shadows in because those are pretty big areas and they will be broken up by some of the darker rock colors. And I'm also widening up that that rock shape in the in the middle ground. So you can see I'm putting darker colors down towards the bottom of the painting, which is the foreground of the scene. And the colors become darker and richer and more intense because they are not subjected to the aerial perspective as intensely as the colors in the background. As the mountains move further back in space, they fade, they become bluer, the atmosphere interferes with the colors and makes things um, fade out. So everything that's down in the bottom part of the picture is in the foreground. So these colors will be much darker. Colors in the foreground are more saturated and colors in the background start to desaturate as you move towards, you know, into the distance. And colors are desaturated as you add the co complementary color to them. So the burnt sienna and the blue are kind of not true complements, but they will gray each other, neutralize each other to a certain extent. So down here in the foreground, I'm putting in some more intense burnt sienna colors. And this area is also picking up more sunlight. So it, that's another reason why the colors will be more intense.
So I feel like I have all the major value areas of value, general lights and darks that I need to have established. And I'm really starting to take advantage of that small brush and putting in the, um, the small little areas where the rocks are showing through the snow. This is a very meditative part of the process for me. I don't have to worry about which colors, you know, if I need to add a color to my palette because my palette is completely harmonious and I know that I'm not trying to copy the colors in the photo. I'm working completely within this palette that I'm really enjoying the way these colors are working together. Um, basically having a light and dark for each color and no yellow, you know, so I'm basically I have like my red range is the lilac to burnt sienna. My blue range is the, the misty blue to the ash blue, but I hadn't felt the need to have any kind of yellow on there. If I was trying to match the photograph, I might add some yellow into the blue in the sky or something, but I really, I really love the way these colors are harmonizing. So at this point, um, using all of the colors and, you know, either having a warm or a cool version of each color and places where it needs to be lighter and darker. This part of the process is just so meditative and so relaxing because I'm not stressing about which colors I need to use next. Um, everything is working together. I really just get lost in it. And finally, you know, I will come back to reality once I realize that I think it's at a point where it's finished. But I can see that there are still some areas that I need to put shadows in, the snow areas at the foot of that mid-ground rock. And just, you know, tidying up some areas. And it's almost there. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed this format of having the reference on the left side and the palette as I'm working on it on the right side. Um, I think it shows the process pretty well and I think I'll probably be doing more of that in the future. So if you'd like to see more of my videos, just hit the subscribe button and feel free to comment about any th questions that you have or comments that you'd like to make. And I hope you'll join me for the next video. I'll see you then.